Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and today we have with us the Sony HTS 500R f5.1 channel system for review. Now a traditional 5.1 home theater has five separate speakers representing each of the channels and one subwoofer. Sony has decided to integrate the front three channels into one soundbar that will sit flush below your TV. The soundbar is quite well built. It has a metallic mesh grill covering the front uh, protecting the drivers. You can see the drivers through the grill. At the bottom it has eight rubber feet which give it good grip when kept on the table. You can also wall mount the soundbar if you like. There is no display on the soundbar because all the display information is on the subwoofer. Uh, the cabling for the speakers isn't detachable and uh, it is integrated into the soundbar and the speakers. This is good because you don't need to worry about connecting cables correctly to each speaker. The downside is that if the cable gets cut, you can't replace it sitting at home. The rear satellite speakers of the home theater are small and their build is ideal for those looking to wall mount the surround speakers. This system is the HTS 500 RF priced at about 31,990 rupees. However, Sony has the HTS 700 RF with the floor standing surround speakers priced at about 39,990 rupees. So you can choose based on your setup. Moving to the subwoofer, this is the heart of the system. All the speakers connect conveniently at the back of the subwoofer and this is where the problem lies. Don't get me wrong, the wires connecting to the back of each speaker are generously long to fit more than the average living room size. So now what I have with me here is something similar to a typical setup at a home. You have your TV mounted on a wall, you might have your Tata Sky, your gaming console, studio monitors if you're into music, and you would place this home theater somewhere out here, right? So we have placed the soundbar on the table out here, and what we have with us is the subwoofer right here. Now the problem is that all the connectivity options are in the back of the subwoofer, and that can be a bit of a bummer because the subwoofer is one thing that you would like to place at a strategic place in the living room where you can get that absolute thumb. Now that is going to be a problem because HDMI cables aren't really that long and the one that comes in the box is good enough if you're going to keep the subwoofer around the TV. But we at Digit came up with a solution. We invested in this. This is a really long HDMI cable so it lets us move the subwoofer quite a bit around this room where we're testing it and the speaker wires that come with the speakers in the box are long enough to connect to the subwoofer somewhere else. So one thing to keep in mind, maybe for the future, Sony could reconsider the connectivity options from the subwoofer to the back of uh, the soundbar or the center channel or something like that itself, which would make connectivity to the television a lot easier. Another thing that lacks in the subwoofer is that even though it takes up one HDMI port, if you are going to use ARC connectivity options, there is no HDMI pass through like we have seen on so many soundbars. So for some of you, that might be a bummer. Coming to the remote control, it is made of plastic, feels minimalistic and is ergonomic. It is lightweight and the buttons are rubbery, making them quite easy to press. The power and the source buttons are right at the top, making them easy to reach. The remote gives you access to a bunch of features such as auto sound, subwoofer level controls and a lot more. There is also a dimmer button which dims the display of the subwoofer for a more immersive viewing experience. The remote is simple and easy to use and when we paired the system with the TV using the HDMI ARC connectivity, all the basic volume and playback controls were usable through the TV's remote control. Well, magically my clothes have changed and my appearance has changed is because we have shot both the things in the house we tested and this part uh, with some time difference in the middle. However, we are going to talk about the performance of the Sony home theater. Now, uh, we played a lot of music on uh, the system via Bluetooth and one thing to notice is that if you have a really nice uh, long living room or a big living room where you have enough space for all uh, the home theater set up with the soundbar in the front and the speakers at the back, then yeah, you can enjoy music on the system. You get the front left and right uh, speaker as well as the surround speakers to contribute along with the subwoofer. However, there is always the case to be made that if you are an audiophile, you will always prefer dedicated studio monitors that are aimed at music. Now, when it comes to movies and gaming performance, there are a couple of things to notice. First of all, if this is your first home theater, if you want a simple home theater out of the box, if you are looking for a one-stop shop solution for your home theater needs, then yeah, absolutely, you can go ahead with this. This will definitely enhance the audio experience that you get from your TV. However, these are a few things to keep in mind. Now, when you have a traditional home theater set up, the left channel, the right channel and the center channel are a little away from each other. 
in this case everything is integrated into one sound bar now that might sound very convenient from an aesthetic and setup point of view however let's say if you have a jet flying from the left to the right in front of you then you actually need good channel separation between uh, the left center and the right now this is one thing that i noticed in the sony home theater is that the surround channels also compensate in certain aspects when something is happening in the front of the screen usually the surround channels only compensate when something is happening environmentally or needs to give you the surround effect so if someone is standing on the left and talking you will hear the dialogues uh, come from the left surround as well and similarly for the right this was prominent in games like uh, spider-man on the ps4 as well so yeah these are a few things that you may notice however it just kind of helps give you a more enveloped experience uh, considering the price point the performance of the home theater is actually fairly decent you have decent amount of controls including the levels of uh, the surround speakers and the level of bass from the subwoofer that comes out so like i said you will get a lot of options between 30 and 35 thousand rupees from brands like samsung and onio and denon and you have a lot of options from home theater that you get in a box However, if you have a Sony TV, you want something that matches the same brand. If uh, you can actually walk into an offline retail store and experience this because it is available and we think it is kind of, you know, gets the job done for the price that it's asking for. However, there are still options based on the kind of solution that you need. So if you have a small room, you may want to consider a 2.1 or a soundbar with a dedicated subwoofer to satisfy your needs. If you have a living room and if you want to spend a little more money, you can get a nice dedicated home theater set up with a separate amplifier and separate five speakers but of course that does not have the convenience of a plug and play solution that this sony home theater brings with it well there you have it guys that was our review of this home theater in a box if you liked it you can always hit that like button and you can subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one you can also let us know in the comment section below what you think of home theaters in a box if you have any queries we will do our best to answer them we will catch you in another video until then we're going to enjoy some movies on this one